Well, good morning, church. It's so good that you can join us together to worship. We're going to do a new song. I think you're going to pick it up pretty quickly, but we're just going to bless you with this one this morning. Here we go. You get beautiful ashes. 
Well, hey church, now's the time to come around the offering. And if you're new or a visitor here this morning, then there is no pressure for you to give at all. But if you want to participate with us, then just to the right of me, you'll see in the chat line a button for you to click give. And this is a great opportunity for you to give online. And also after me, there'll be a screen with all of our details should you wish to give this morning. We just want to thank you again for your ongoing support, helping us build what we're doing here at Life Church. And we really know and believe that God is using it to advance his kingdom here on the Wirral. So let me pray for you this morning as you give. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege it is, Lord, to partner with you in building your church. And Lord, I pray, Lord, for every individual and every family, Lord, that partners with us, Lord. I pray that they would know your, your presence and your blessing in their lives. Lord, I pray, Lord, you'd give us wisdom, Lord, to use the money to build your kingdom here on the Wirral, Lord, to reach men and women, boys and girls, with the good news of the gospel. So, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would use it for your glory and for your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's your breath in our love. 
serenity, Lord. Father, we thank you for your presence. Father, thank you that we get this opportunity to praise you, to worship you, to give you our everything, to lay our lives before you. Father, we thank you for the breath that you've given us, that you breathe life into these bones. Father, I pray for each and every one of us right now. That, Father, we make that decision that we're going to use that breath. We're going to use what you've given us inside. And we're going to give it to you, to give you glory, to give you honor, to give you praise to the one who is worthy no matter what. We worship you. We praise you. 
we give you glory, God. For, and Father, we say together, great are you, Lord. Thank you. What a great time of worship we've had with the band this morning. Over at Life Kids, we've been having so much fun on our two Zoom calls every week. We've been doing things like fitness, fun and games through the week. And then on a Sunday, we really get down to it and talk about something to do with the Bible. Over the last few weeks, we've looked at loving everyone always. And the kids have taken to this really well in their day-to-day -day life. So well done, Life Kids. Over the next few weeks, we have so much more planned. So if you have any children aged 4 to 11, please contact me at hal at mylifechurch.co.uk to get them involved. Now we're going to head over to family life. Hi church. So um, our dog Nina is stuck to a tennis ball right now, but we're just going to do a little update for you. So um, we hope everyone is well in oh. lockdown and... James is going to update you on what he's been doing in lockdown. Yeah, hi, hope everyone's doing well. We've been praying for all you guys and hoping you're staying safe and feeling refreshed over lockdown. Hope you've been enjoying the online content as we have. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't really been up to too much. It's just been relaxing and uh, delivering pizzas on the side, which has been fun. Uh, with Lids Stanway, by the way. So, Kate, and what have you been doing during lockdown? I've just been doing like dog walks and little things like that, but at the moment I'm waiting for my A level grades because obviously my A levels were cancelled this year, so I'm just interested to know what uni I'll be at next year, really. Yeah. Anyway, guys, we hope to all see you in person soon and that we just pray that everyone stays safe throughout the rest of lockdown. Hopefully, it's not much longer and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. Hello, Life Church, Church Full of Life. I'm sending you this video from Port Sunlight where I live and we try and get out around the village every day for a walk which is great uh, we love living here we're very happy here um, work is still busy two days a week um, normally i visit mums and babies in their own homes but we're working online now so it's mm -hmm. telephone and whatsapp and so on and i'm getting good with technology everything's moved online hasn't it so our wave the spirit bible study groups are online connect group is on zoom and um, we've been doing some great series in our connect group and with all the prayer warriors. So that's really exciting. This week we have a special treat. Doreen's invited us over for afternoon tea on the lawn. So I'm sure that will be lovely. Um, back here at home, I've got the good fortune to be married to a man who is a great cook. So I'm eating really well, probably a little too well, if I'm honest. And um, I'll have to try and work it off a bit. My project this week is clearing out the garage. Not very glamorous, but it's got to be done, I guess. So yeah, keeping busy, we're all well. Missing church, I know everybody says that, but it's true. And it'll be great to see you all again. Okay, God bless, bye for now. Hey, wasn't Family Life great again this morning as we look and see what different families in the church are up to. Hey, it's my honour and delight this morning to welcome Grayson Jones, who's the senior pastor at Legacy Church over in Doncaster. Grayson has been uh, a good friend of mine and a mentor to me over many years. Him and Del do a great job over there with a campus model church and he's doing incredibly well. But this morning he's going to be ministering the word to us. He came to us at the back end of uh, 2019 and, uh, and he's going to be speaking for us again this morning. So I'd encourage you, lean in and listen to what Grayson has to say. I know he's going to be uh, a challenging word that's going to speak right to the very heart of each one of us. So take it away, Grayson, and, uh, and I'll see you at the end. Thank you. Hi, Life Church. Good to be with you this morning. My name is Grayson Jones. Uh, I'm the pastor, senior pastor from Legacy Church in Doncaster and Swansea. Great to be with you. Sorry that we're not together, but it's great to be able to communicate to you online this morning. And for anybody else who's logging in, I know the different people are having a look at church in these days. If you're joining us today, great to have you with us. And uh, yeah, we're just going to get into the Word of God. I'm sure that you're aware that we're living in incredibly unprecedented times. Times where everything is shaking, everything is changing, everything is happening at a different pace. In fact, 
even as a church, as we try to make decisions about what to do, when to open, it seems as if one week we can do this, the next week everything has changed. And so we're in this place where everything is upside down. And yet one thing in the midst of this that we need to understand, God is in control. God is faithful. God is faithful to who he is. He's faithful to what he's doing. And he already knows what he is doing in this whole situation. And what he wants from you and me is not that we would react to what's going on around us, not that we would just um, be drawn into speculation and thinking and worry and fear, but that we would be people of faith, that you and me would put our faith not in the situation, not in government, not in vaccination, not in all the stuff. Thank God for all that stuff that's happening, but that we would put our faith in God and in his son, Jesus Christ. And we need to understand today, faith is not a feeling. It's not an emotion. It's not something that um, I actually move into and think, oh, I'm feeling strong today. No, faith is a decision to put my trust against my feelings, against maybe sometimes my thinking or my understanding, putting my trust in God and saying, God, you are the one that I am trusting in. You're the one I'm believing in. You're the one that I'm putting my faith in today. And throughout the Bible, we see so many people who, in the midst of incredibly difficult situations, trusted God, put their faith in God, and saw the effects and the results of their faith. First one is Abraham. Abraham was called out of a Babylon, basically, Ur of the Chaldeans. He's called out. God just spoke to him and said, come into a place that I will show you. Not a place he showed him, but a place I will show you. Come and follow me. And so Abraham left with his family. He walked into the promise and walked by faith into the land that God had given him. Uh, God said to him, I will give you a son. He, him and his wife were barren. They had no child. But God said, I'll give you a son. Trust me and I'll give you a son. It took 25 years for that promise to be outworked. But he got a son. When he had a son, when the child was 13, when Isaac was 13 in Genesis 22, God said to him, I want you to go and sacrifice your son. And so Abraham obeyed God, took him, laid him on the altar, got the knife, got everything ready. And then God spoke to him, Abraham, Abraham, don't touch him. I know now that you have put me before anything. That's the walk of faith. It's not something that's easy. But Abraham believed God and was able to do incredible things. Joseph, uh, one of the children of Jacob, Joseph was taken into uh, Egypt. He was sold by his brothers. He had a dream. He had this incredible dream that he would do incredible things for God. And yet he's sold into slavery when he's serving in Potiphar's house. Then all of a sudden, his uh, Potiphar's wife comes on to him and said, come on, Joseph, come to bed with me. He runs. And so she then gives a bad report to Potiphar because of his integrity. He gets ends up in prison. But finally, after years of serving and bondage and prison, he becomes number two in Egypt. God was faithful. He fulfilled the dream that Joseph had years and years before. Moses. Moses was a man who knew what it was to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. Different people. Gideon living in isolation in fear. And yet God comes and speaks to him and says, Gideon, you mighty warrior. Come on, you're going to do something for God. And he was, he was hiding and yet God called something out of him. And by faith he responded and he delivered Israel from the oppression they were in under the enemy at that time. David was a young boy when he stood before Goliath and he said, you're coming down. I come to you in the name of my God and you are coming down today. Jeremiah, Paul, there's all different people from all different backgrounds, all different experiences who came up against obstacles, but overcame because of faith. They weren't better than you. They weren't different to you. They were the same type of people. They had doubts, they had fears, they had worries, anxiety, but something rose up that caused them to move into what God had for them. All the heroes of faith. In, in Hebrews 11, you can read about all the different heroes. Some saw incredible things, some trusted God in the midst of problems and even though they trusted God they went through the issue and God said they are heroes. I want to talk today about somebody who probably we wouldn't list in that area 
But I want to say to you as a person of faith, she, she's found in Mark chapter 5, and she's a woman who's got this problem, this issue that she's facing. But because of her faith and trust and her actions of faith, she sees the miracle happen for her that she needs. Right now, you may be watching this and you need a miracle. You might be watching this and you, you're looking at life, you're looking at what's going on around you and you're thinking, man, alive, everything's falling apart, everything's going wrong, I'm not sure I'm gonna get a job, I'm not sure if this is gonna work, I'm not sure how that's all. I wanna say to you, this woman faced her problem, but she found the answer through faith and we can do the same. And so she's found in Mark 5, 24 to 34, just read the story and then we'll have a look at what happened in her that engaged her in this faith activity. It says this, a large crowd followed and pressed around him. This is Jesus. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him and behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was free from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized the power had gone out from him. He turned in the, around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Here's the story about a woman who had this bleeding, constant bleeding for 12 years. Everything that she had wanted to do, everything that she had wanted to try and overcome this problem, she had tried. She'd been to the doctors. She'd used all her money. She'd spent on any medication, any cure that she thought would do it. And for 12 years, she tried and tried and tried and failed and failed and failed. She had tried everything, she'd been everywhere, she talked to everyone, and constantly, every time she stepped forward, things were against her. The doctor, if you like, he had said, there's nothing I can do. After 12 years of trying, he had ended up saying, there's no cure. You cannot be cured. There's nothing you can do. The bank said there's no money left. So you can, you can try and go somewhere. You might hear about a new cure. You might find out that somebody has got something, but there's no money left. Society said you're not valuable. You can't come out. In, in the setting of the day, if you, if you were bleeding because of the religious constraints in that culture, you weren't allowed to go to church, you weren't allowed to go to the synagogue, you weren't allowed to go out in society because you were seen as unclean. And so society said, listen, you got no value, you got nothing you can contribute, you can't work, you can't serve, you can't get involved. And therefore, they devalued her. The religion said, there's no way for you, there's no future for you, you can't get anywhere. Her condition said, You've got what you've got and you're stuck. Everything in her life dictated, spoke to her and said, you are going nowhere, you are getting nothing. But, but somehow, we're not told how, she heard about Jesus coming into town. Everything within her said that she was going to be absorbed in her condition. Her finances, her bank, her her people around her, probably her family said, look, you know, stop trying to get this fixed. You just have to understand this is life. It's not going to change. Or maybe somebody has said to you, listen, you can't change this. Listen, maybe you've said to yourself, listen, you can't change this. This is never going to change. I want to say to you, all things are possible with God. All things are possible. And one of the things we need to understand is we don't live by the word of religion. We don't live by the word of the doctor. We don't live by the word of the bank. We don't live by the word of the employer. We don't even live by the words of our family. We, as the people of God, are called to live by the word of God. And the Bible says all things are possible to those who believe. You and me can see a miracle. We can have something if we will just trust and push in in faith and see God do something for us. And whatever you are facing right now, whatever things are ahead of you, I want to say your, de your best days are ahead of you. Don't dismiss them. Don't, uh, 
Don't allow things to pull you down into the pit to say, oh, it's not going to happen. You see, this woman, she wakes up this day. We're not told what day it was. We're not told how she thought about it. We're not told anything. We're just told a woman with an issue of blood pushed in and touched Jesus. She said to herself, if I just touch the edge of his garment, I'll be healed. She changed her language. Instead of saying the bank says, I can't do it this way. She said, if I just... I will get. What's your language like right now? What are you saying to yourself right now? Oh, it'll never happen. It'll never work. Not me. Not where I'm from. Not what I've got. Not what I've done. Listen, it's not about what you've done. It's not about who you are. It's about the God who wants to do something for you. He wants you to put your faith in him. He wants you to get a vision for your future. He wants you to see something different so you can say something different. Listen to what Proverbs 29, 18 says. Without a vision, people perish. Without a vision, people perish or the NIV throw off constraint. What does that mean? They go and they, they, they just try everything. She tried everything for 12 years. Her vision was to try and get healed, but she had tried. Now she was just thinking, I gotta do something that will get me healed. I wanna move into what God has got for me, but what do I do? I I don't know what to do. But now she heard about Jesus and immediately a vision. She had a vision for what God could do for her. And for you and me, it's important we don't just sit back in these days and just think, well, que sera, que sera, what'll be, will be. No. We've got a God who is above all things. We've got a God who wants to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can think, ask, or even imagine. And we're not called to lay down under the situation. We're called to live above the circumstances, that we have a vision beyond what anybody else has. I don't know if you've ever flown over mountains. You can fly over the Alps. And and when you look down, they look so small. But if you're in the valley below them, they look huge, towering above you. And some of us, we're seeing our situation from the wrong perspective. We're trying to look up at things and think, I can't get healed. God wants us to get a new vision, a new perspective. Because when we see vision clearly, it changes things. You see, vision changes our passion. It drives us forward. It makes us helps us make that decision to go forward. When you get a vision, all of a sudden you think, no, no, God, you can do this for me. And I think she got up this morning and she thought to herself, Jesus is coming into town. I'm going to push forward. I'm going to stretch beyond where I'm at. Viktor Frankl, who was a Jew who ended up in the concentration camps, he said this, everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances to choose one's own way. He was saying in the midst of the terrible situation he was in, they took away everything. They took away my food. They took away my freedom. They took away my liberty. They took away everything that made me a man. But one thing defined me and that was my attitude to what I was going through. I'm going to overcome. I'm going to break through. I'm going to push on. He had a vision beyond the concentration camp and so he saw himself find freedom because he lived with the perspective of I'm going to get through this. What's your perspective right now? What is your perspective? As as we face this pandemic, as we see our world in turmoil, as we see everything chaotically happening, as you look at employment, you look at all those things, I want you to get a vision because that drives your passion and we need passion to go forward. We don't want to be just sitting down thinking, oh, well, let's see what happens. Passion motivates us. It triggers something within us. Uh, Vision uh, motivates us towards the goal that we see. And right now, having been in lockdown and you might feel demotivated, you might feel deflated, you might feel fed up. I'm, I'm fed up of going into the office every day in my house and doing the same things and limitations and cues and masks and you can get fed up. But you see, we've got to see beyond this. We've got to see a day where God is, because I think God is doing incredible things in these days. We might not see it, but I know that God always, he's always doing more behind us than we can see in front of us. And for you right now, I don't know what, what you are seeing, but I want you to see with new eyes. 
Because you need motivation to move forward. You need motivation to believe God like never before. Some people have said your firm might shut down. God says, hey, I can give you the job of your dreams if you will trust me. Some people have said, well, it's not going to happen. And, it, you know, you're going to end up with no house. And God says, no, I can, I can manage everything if you put your trust in me. It's not about what we can think. It's not about what we can fix. It's not about what we can plan and get working on. It's about trusting God. You see, vision gives us direction. Vision gives us purpose. And what we need to do is we need to have a vision that overcomes the opposition. She saw, if I just get to connect with Jesus, if I just get near him, if I just touch the edge of his garment, I'll be healed. She had a faith talk, she had a faith understanding, but she also had a faith action. And faith is not given in to the fears, they're real. The doubts, the worries, the concerns, they are real. We're not called to live by reality, we're called to live by faith. We're not called to live by facts, but by faith. We're not called to live by our feelings, but faith. Oh, but I don't feel I've got faith. Faith isn't what you feel. Faith is the reality that we step into. Living by faith, it's not that we don't have doubts, but that we don't give in to doubts. It's that we speak God's word over our lives, over our situations, that we come into that place where we analyze, see it, and then put God on top of it. She had real fears. What if she went out into the crowd and the crowd rejected her? What if they stoned her? She was, as I've already said, as far as the religious was concerned and society was concerned, she was valueless. But more than that, if in those days you rubbed up against somebody who had a problem like she had, that would make you unclean and you were disqualified for seven days from going into the synagogue, from doing the things that you did. So her going out was a real risk. What if, what if, what if? You might be, that might be your language right now. What if it all goes wrong? What if? Listen, there's always, always, a challenge in the area of faith. What if? But listen, we've got to put our trust in a God who is faithful. He doesn't give a what if. He says yes and amen in Christ Jesus. The crowd could have rejected her. They could have spotted her and turned on her. They could have stoned her. They could have been all manner of things. She could have, I, I don't know if, if, if you can imagine what it's like to be 12 years with, with blood flowing from your body constantly. She would have been anemic, she would have been pale, she would have been almost, her energy levels would have been zero. She would have had to force herself to go out into the town. She would have thought, I'm gonna hide myself, I'm gonna make sure that, that I position myself where I've got to. But to do that, there were obstacles. There was doubt, there was fear, there was the crowd, there was a situation, the health. What if on the way she collapsed? Who would pick it up? What, if, what would they say? All of these doubts were very real to this woman, but she said, if I jest, not if, if. I want to say to you, if you can just believe God, if you can just allow that connection to happen, God can do incredible things for you. This woman had so many thoughts, so many questions, so many things against her, but she pushed through in faith. In uncertain times like her, we need to be people of faith. We need to push through in faith doesn't mean that you don't question doesn't mean you don't doubt doesn't mean that you don't feel fear but you're going to push through faith moves us from where we are to where we need to be it says that she gets up in the morning and she has all of these doubts all of these things but she says no i'm going and she stepped out of her home you can imagine walking out of the door, looking down the road, thinking, I hope nobody spots me and hope nobody sees me. Your faith has got to step over a line. It's got to push forward. Faith isn't giving in to the circumstances. It's moving out, trusting God that he will be there as we step out. He will be waiting for us to connect with us. Faith helps, helps us to push through the obstacles that are in our way. And there are obstacles. You might be one of those people who've been told already, we're not sure about your job, we're not sure what can happen. And, and in a time like this, all of a sudden you're looking around and thinking, well, there won't be other jobs. And I, I want you to put your trust in God. Don't put your trust in your boss. Don't put your trust in your employment or your skills or the things that you've done. You might be looking at situations and you're worried about the house and how we're going to pay the mortgage. Or maybe it's your health. 
and you haven't been able to go to the hospital or they haven't called you for that appointment that they were setting up and that thing that you feel is is just overwhelming listen 12 years this woman had grappled with it on her own but today was her day of breakthrough because she said if i just instead of if there's a big difference yeah but what if what if and she said if i just and we need to change our language faith moves us beyond isolation and one of the things that we've lived in over the last four or five months is this whole thing of isolation where we locked in and and we we stuck in our situation 12 years she'd been living in the same home doing the same things worried about it just visiting the doctor and going home in isolation she'd heard about Jesus and all of a sudden something arose within her that says if I just touch the edge of his garments I'll be healed and for you and me faith moves us out of this place of isolation and connects us with a God who loves us. She determined to go forward. She determined to push in. She determined to put her faith into operation. Faith connects us to Jesus. Without faith, the Bible says, it's impossible to please God. And maybe during this time, you've been working hard, trying to be better and do better and think better and talk better. And I don't know how you were getting on with all of that, but I know whenever I try, I fail. Because it's not about you being better. If you're a child of God, it's about trusting him. It's not about you connecting with a new job or connecting with this or connecting with it. It's about you connecting with Jesus. And Jesus wants to do something for you. Faith helps us make it to the other side. It says that she steps over the line. She moves forward. All the obstacles are still there. She pushes through the crowd. It says that she touches the edge of his coat. And so she gets down, reaches as far as she can, and just touches the edge of his uh, garment. And instantly, she feels healed. Instantly, something happens. Why? Because faith has to have a touch point. Faith has to have something that we connect to. Maybe you need a date in your life. Maybe you need something where you just say, okay, but this time, God, I'm believing you for. Don't allow your faith to be passive. Make it active. Energize and say, God, I'm looking for you to do this. Don't just say, I want to be blessed. What does that mean? Say, God, I want you to help me with this. I'm looking for you to do that. And by then, I'm believing that that day is the day that you're going to send me that, or you're going to give me that, or I'm going to get that report, or I'm going to get healed. Somehow that you would be touched by him. She touches and Jesus stops. And he says to everybody, somebody touched me. <laughs> Jesus, everybody's touching you. We're all squat. No, no, no. Somebody touched me. You see, you can be in the presence of God. You can rub up against Jesus without faith and nothing happens. Everybody was touching Jesus. He knew people. But when faith touches Jesus, instantly there was a drawing down into her body. She was healed. He knew the touch of faith as the touch of connection, fellowship, if you like. You might spend a lot of time in the presence of Jesus. You might spend a lot of time talking to Jesus, praying, reading the Bible, trying to work and do things and all the rest of it. But I tell you, just one touch of faith changes everything. And for you and me, God is looking for us to touch him with our faith. Not with our works, not with our efforts, not with our energy, not with all the stuff that we can or can't do, not with all the things that we think. This woman reached out and touched him. He stopped. Somebody touched me. She, it says this, she came trembling before him because she now had to own the fact that she touched him. And she said, it, it was me. And he looked at her as she's trembling. Was she worried that she was going to lose it? Was she worried that she was now exposed? Was she worried that she was identified? No, Jesus says, your faith has healed you. Notice Jesus doesn't say, I've healed you. Notice he doesn't say anything about anything else. Your works have helped. Hey, you're a good woman. He just says, your faith has healed you. Your faith has given you the breakthrough. Your faith will give you that job that you need. That faith, your faith will help you through that difficult circumstance. Your faith in the doctor, in, in, in that healing will overcome the doctor's report. 
I want to encourage you today. I want to challenge you today. Believe God. Believe, believe God and trust God and step into what he's got for you and allow him to do a miracle for you. Here's the situation. Imagine that woman walking away from that crowd. Everybody would have seen the miracle. What a day. What, a, what an opportunity. Everybody would have gone home and Barbara would have been speaking to Alan. She would have said, I was down in the marketplace today and I saw an incredible thing. This little woman, she came up and she was gone. She was white and she, she just touched Jesus. And all of a sudden he stopped. He did this thing and she walked away completely changed. That would have been her story. Somebody else would have gone to the bakers or, and they would have all been talking. But can you imagine for her going home? I bet she almost ran home. She would have flung open the doors. I don't know if she had anybody in the house. She would have said, today I've been healed. Today I decided I was going to get what God got for me. And I went forward and God touched me, healed me. He's done it. Everywhere she went, she would have been talking about that experience for the rest of her life. Why? Because faith changes things. It wasn't a good idea. It wasn't a dream. Or maybe if I do that, maybe something will happen. It was, I am going to do this and he's going to touch me. If I just touch the edge of his garment, I'll be healed. What a confession. What's your confession right now? What is, what is your state of play in your life right now? Is it all about religion? Is it about duty? Is it about worry? Is it about news? Is it about vaccines and COVID-19 and downturn and unemployment and Britain going bust and blah, blah, blah. And I tell you what, it's, it's like sucking the life out of you. I want to say to you today, why don't you sit in a room with God, open your heart to him and invite him to begin to cultivate the faith that is within you. You've got a gift of faith in you. The measure of faith has been given to you, but you've got to grow that faith. You need to sit and you need to saturate. You need to permeate. You need to pickle your faith in the presence of God. And you need to allow that to just sit and you need to trust him. And then you need to step out and obey what he is saying to you. If if you've got a problem, you need to be praying and praying and praying and moving into that faith position so that you can break out. Get a vision for your future right now. A great day, not a bad day. Great things happening, not bad things happening. Life, not death. Hope and a future. That's what the Bible promises us in Jeremiah 29, 11. I, have, I know the plans I have for you, God says, to give you a hope and a future. Right now, if you've never opened your heart to Jesus, right now where you are, Jesus wants to come into your life. And you might be saying, but I don't know God. I don't know anything about you. You don't need to know anything about him. You just need to know you need him in your life. Why do you need him? Because you, like me, are a sinner. And if you don't get a savior to help you, you are lost. Not just now, but for eternity. The Bible says when Jesus died, he died for you to take your sin away so you can have a brand new relationship with God. You don't have to do anything. Just like this woman, you just put your trust in what Jesus has already done for you when he died on the cross. And so right now, if you were watching this and you were saying, I want to give my life to Jesus, I want to pray for you right now that you would know Jesus working in your life. Come on, let's just, you just pray this prayer right now if you want God to come into your life. Dear Jesus, I open my heart to you and I invite you into my life. I pray that you would change me. You would save me. You would forgive me. I choose to follow you from this day on, but I ask it in your precious name. If you were sitting there today and you've got a problem, you've got an issue you're facing, right now I want to speak the word of the Lord to you. God is faithful. He will respond to your faith. And so open your heart right now. I want to pray for you. Father, I pray for different people right now who are sitting watching this video. I pray right now in the name of Jesus. People, somebody with a bad back, I pray in the name of Jesus, you would heal them. They've been struggling with their back for years. It's a constant thing that happens with them. Every time they seem to get ahead, it, 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 
limits them again. I pray right now in Jesus' name that you would heal them. Somebody, Father, who's had bad news this week, I pray that you would eradicate that news so that you would cause them to believe you and trust you like never before. People, Father, who are thinking about their jobs, thinking about opportunities, thinking about all the different things, people with worry and fear and anxiety, I pray faith into their lives right now that they will trust you and believe you like never before. Do a miracle for us so that you can do a miracle through us. Give a testimony, oh God, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey guys, it's been great to be with you. God bless you. Keep going for it. Keep believing God. Step into faith and let's see God do some great things for us. Catch you soon. Bless you. Well, I told you he was going to be good, challenging, and uh, just a great word there from Grayson Jones this morning. Hey, I pray and hope that you've enjoyed this morning at Life Church, online church, and I pray that you'll have a fantastic week and see us next week for what I know is going to be another incredible preacher and another incredible time together as we meet online to worship Jesus. Have a great week, church. God bless you.